Okay, round one of my capillary electrophoresis experiment. You can actually see electrophoresis taking place with the dye. Quite nicely there. It's attracted towards the negative side, so it must be a positively charged dye. Okay, so that's moving at quite a reasonable rate. Um, and it is detectable um, through the, the cable, or through the capillary. Mm -hmm. And at least in theory, one should be able to make a uh, electrophoresis unit that's capable of, uh, um, uh, well, measuring uh, bits of DNA floating by. Now, in this particular case, what happened, both ends of the dye have actually been soaked uh, into the uh, solution. And what's actually happening is the dye is attracted towards the negative side. Power is being supplied by a very, very crazily wired up um, compact flash power supply with three diodes acting together um, such that uh, uh, the breakdown of any particular one isn't overcome and producing high voltage. Evidence that high voltage is being produced can be seen by this little pigtail neon. Very hard to do this and photograph. If I touch across there, you can see that you got, well, enough voltage to to run a neon that strikes at about 120 volts, or actually with a resistor well above its rated value of 250. These things should be putting out about 700 volts at the moment, but I don't own a meter that has a high enough input impedance to check that. Okay, so what I wanted to say, and why I want to draw this to the attention of my DIY biohacker friends, and you can see that we are well into there. In fact, you're just about to come out past there, yeah? Okay, with our die. Just the reason for doing for making that the case is that um, I reckon we could actually run some quite sophisticated electrophoresis things. And you can certainly get some good resolution on that. Certainly enough for a ladder that I reckon maybe it's even possible to sequence something short. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, mad ramblings over.